In this video, we are going to explore the fundamental counting principle in just a little bit more depth. We have two goals for this video. The first will be to understand that we can extend the FCP to scenarios that include more than two tasks. Secondly, we will explore situations in which we cannot apply the fundamental counting principle. Let's begin by looking at our first example. It reads, a luggage lock opens with the correct three-digit code. You can see I've got a picture of one here in the corner. Each wheel rotates through the digits 0 through 9. So, how many different three-digit codes are possible? Let's start by analyzing the problem. When we're asked to select a code, it is technically asking us to do three different tasks. The first task would be to select a digit for wheel one, and then we would need to select a digit for wheel two, and finally, we would select a digit for wheel three. You can hear that I've really emphasized that keyword and. I've got three tasks here that are related by the word and, therefore, I can use the fundamental counting principle. Now, I often find it helpful to draw a diagram to visualize the problem. I'm going to start by just drawing three blanks that will represent each wheel in the code. Beneath, I'm just going to label them W1, W2, and W3. Our next task will then be to determine how many possibilities there are for each wheel. Now, let's start by looking at W1. Since we can rotate through digits 0 all the way up to 9, there are 10 possible digits for wheel 1. In this scenario, we are going to assume that we are allowed to use the same number multiple times in our code. Therefore, wheel 2 and wheel 3 will also have 10 possibilities. Let's calculate the total number of codes. I'm going to use the variable n just to represent the number of possibilities. And you can see here that I'm using the fundamental counting principle to multiply each of the possibilities for each of the wheels. Since there are 10 possibilities for each wheel, I am simply going to mul multiply 10 times 10 times 10 which gives me a thousand total possible codes. Now, what happens if repetition is not allowed? That takes us to part B. Part B says, suppose each digit can be only used once in the code. It would like to know how many different codes are possible when repetition is not allowed. Since repetition is not allowed this time, it will make sense that we should end up with fewer possibilities for codes than we did when repetition was allowed. I'm going to begin by drawing this same diagram. Each blank is going to represent the digits possible for each of the wheels. Again, I'll label them W1, 2, and 3. Let's look at the possibilities for each wheel. Starting with wheel 1. Since none of the digits have been used yet, we still have all 10 options available to us for wheel 1. Now let's think about wheel 2. Since one digit has already been used in wheel 1 and we are not allowed to repeat that same digit, there are only 9 options left for wheel 2. And if we extend that to wheel 3, we cannot repeat the digits from wheel 1 or wheel 2 that leaves us with only eight options left for wheel three. Now again, I can use the fundamental counting principle to calculate the total number of codes when I'm selecting a digit for wheel one and wheel two and wheel three. I'm going to use the same little formula that I used for part A where N represents the total number of codes, and then W1, W2, and W3 represent the possibilities for each wheel. So in this case, I would multiply 10 
times 9 times 8 to give me 720 possibilities for codes. In this example, we applied the FCP to a situation that has three tasks. This was an extension to the example that we did in the first video, which only had two tasks. It's important to note that we can extend the FCP to four, five, or six tasks, and so on. In our last example, we are going to explore a problem where we cannot apply the FCP. The last example reads, a standard deck of cards contains 52 cards. It would like us to count the number of possibilities of drawing a single card and getting A, either a black face card or an ace, or in situation B, either a red card or a 10. We should start by analyzing the problem to determine whether or not we can actually use the fundamental counting principle. Notice that in both of these situations, the tasks are related by the word or. This is different than our last few examples where the tasks were related by the word and. So in this case, instead of applying the FCP, we are simply going to add to find the total number of possibilities. Let's dig into part A a little bit deeper. If you are familiar with the deck of cards, you will know that it is not possible to pull both a black face card and an ace. In this case, these tasks are what we call mutually exclusive from one another. So in this case, we will look at how many possibilities there are for selecting a black face card, and then we will look at the number of possibilities for selecting an ace. Our final task will be to add them together to determine the total number of possibilities. Let's start by looking at the black face cards. In each suit in the deck, there are three face cards, and half of the suits are black. Therefore, we can count six total black face cards. When we look at the aces, there is one ace per suit in the deck of cards. Therefore, in total, we have four possibilities for aces. So, in order to figure out the number of possibilities, I'm simply going to add together the two options. So, there are six options for black face cards, plus four possibilities for ace cards. There is ten possibilities to select a black face card or an ace. Now let's dig into part B a little bit more. In this case, it is actually possible to select both a card that is a 10 and that is red. Therefore, these tasks are described as being not mutually exclusive from one another. We need to be careful to ensure that we do not count these possibilities twice. So we're going to start by drawing a Venn diagram to help us visualize how these events relate to one another and to help us count out the possibilities. I am going to draw two intersecting sets here. I've labeled the left set R to represent the red cards in the deck, and I've labeled the right set T to represent the tens in the deck. Let's start by looking at the red cards. Half of the deck is going to be red for a total of 26 cards. Now I know that two of those cards are also tens. Therefore, I'm going to put a two right in the middle of my Venn diagram where the two sets intersect. That leaves me with 24 cards that are red, but not a 10. And then I've got two cards that are tens, but not red. That's a total of four tens in our deck. I'm simply going to take the 24 cards that are only red, plus the two that are both red and a 10, and then add in those two black tens for a total of 28 possibilities. Let's recap what we've learned in this video. The first thing that we came to learn was that the fundamental counting principle can be extended to more than two tasks. 
From there, we explored situations in which repetition was and was not allowed. And finally, we came to realize that when tasks are related by the word or, we cannot apply the fundamental counting principle.